With all seven members of the Lowell School Committee in attendance, the Superintendent Screening Committee last evening interviewed the fifth and final semi-finalist for the superintendency in Lowell, Dr. Celine Bonner, who is currently an assistant superintendent in Hamden, Connecticut. Uh, Dr. Bonner has a Bachelor in Science in Biology from Skidmore and a Master of Science in Biology from Purdue. She explained that uh, although she went into biology, she found herself at some point instructing biology or teaching it, and she found that she excelled in teaching and was drawn to it. Uh, so she also got a master's degree in education and ultimately a doctorate in education from the University of Connecticut. She worked uh, primarily in the Waterbury, Connecticut school system, uh, a system, uh, a city that is somewhat smaller than Lowell, but probably has a similar demographic. Uh, more recently, she's been the assistant superintendent in Hamden. Uh, I, from what she explained, it sounded like the superintendent uh, recently passed away and that uh, Dr. Bonner uh, may have a more responsibility than the average assistant superintendent. She described Hamden as very political, just like all towns are and that there's been great pressure to keep down taxes and so that she's had a lot of experience working with the mayor and the community on what she called a fiscally responsible budget. Um, overall, Dr. Bonner was very, I think she seemed very comfortable. She was very engaging, friendly. It would be very hard imagining someone getting uh, upset with her or her uh, allowing someone to get upset or angry with her. Uh, she just seemed like a very nice person. Uh, she also seemed very sharp. Her answers were concise. She never went close to going over time. And uh, her interview only lasted 50 minutes, even though a full an hour and 15 minutes were allotted. Uh, one response I found particularly interested, interesting was her, her answer uh, on her experience with discipline and disciplinary policy. She emphasized that it has to be equitable, that there's no bias in how you suspend children. Uh, she said that she uh, she couldn't. F she she looked at the dropout rate and the absence rate for Lowell on the uh, on the Department of Education website, and she couldn't find the suspension rate on that website. And she said all of those taken together were interesting. And she said interesting in a way that if she were writing it, she would have put quotation marks around it, almost as uh, using it as a synonym for troubling. Uh, she said that were she to be hired as superintendent, the way she would tackle the issue of discipline was to have, as she put it, a courageous conversation with teachers and administrators. And she said that what we don't want to do is remove kids from the classroom. They come to school to be educated, and when you suspend them, you take them out of that that setting. Um, and that, I think, must be a, a school of thought in education these days. I think the other side of that uh, that policy is that perhaps the child who uh, would otherwise be suspended is in the class uh, other than contrary to being out of the class on a suspension but you have to ask what kind of an education are the other children in the class those who are there who are behaving themselves and complying with the rules receiving when the teacher is constantly preoccupied with one or two disruptive students uh, but that's not I think unique to Dr. Bonner, that, that certainly seems to be the prevailing theory in education these days. Uh, but it's certainly something that the school committee will consider in selecting its next superintendent. Uh, here's a clip of Dr. Bonner, the fifth and final semi-finalist. The school committee in the coming week will re-interview uh, these candidates and uh, ultimately will select one to be the next Lowell superintendent here in Lowell Public Schools. Okay, thank you. Uh, currently, in terms of parent involvement, um, there are several things that we have instituted in Hamden uh, to encourage parents to participate in the schools. Uh, first of all, we started looking at um, some of the curriculum options that we offer, so we wanted to enrich our literacy program. So we have what we call uh, Mother Father Reads, where we encourage the parents to come in and work with the children. Um, and also work with some of our staff, and this is an evening event. 
Um, some other things that we've done are some community forums that we've opened up to the, uh, to the parents where we talk about uh, successes and academic successes and how can we partner with other parents who children, whose children may not be as um, successful in school. What are some of the things that we can encourage um, parents to do? And then also we've had some open forums about No Child Left Behind. Um, about a year ago or so, I did a parent survey uh, across the district and uh, there were several questions on there. And um, one of the questions was uh, in terms of uh, school uniforms and looking at student dress. And uh, there was an interest of possibly instituting uh, school uniforms in the district. And so uh, with that interest, I brought it to the Board of Education. And then with that, I actually formed a, a parent focus group to take a look at that particular uh, issue in the district. Um, and currently, we do not have school uniforms. So right now, we're still kind of at a, a standstill. The board is not supporting. They're backing away from it. It was a little contentious. But those are some of the things that I've done in terms of uh, working with parents. And then also in terms of being very visible at events and having the opportunity to talk to parents and to encourage them to be a part of their, of their, of their school and of their neighborhood and to um, be a little bit more visible and, and vocal and have a voice and to know that your voice is heard. Um, but most of the concern is that to, to tell parents what is actually going on in the schools and to understand what is uh, No Child Left Behind, what is that all about, why are we assessing our kids more and more, and what are those standards, and what are we doing to meet those standards, and um, just informing them about some of the things that are going on, having that open relationship.